So let's get started. Um, I hope this will be as eventful as the, as the previous uh, panel. Um, I'm sure it will. So it's become pretty clear from all the presentations that we've, we've visited today um, that you know, dollar for dollar, the best way for us to reach our target consumers is by putting together a great digital marketing strategy. Um, yet many of us still have a difficulty in terms of getting our arms around all the technology, social media applications, and we really don't know how to get started. Some of us are just, we're new to the business and, 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 and we're running behind. What's your advice to restaurateurs who are stuck in this predicament and how should they get around these challenges? I'm gonna start with Ian. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about. Sure, I can tell you what we've done. I'm not sure it's for everyone. Uh, we're in a unique position where we're large enough that we can if we choose, invest a great deal of money in, uh, in our own IT, in our own technology. And, um, but we're small enough that we can test it and grow it um, and iterate on it very quickly. And we have a homogenous system. So us versus a big multinational, if they want to do something new with technology, they've got to run it past and dumb it down to its lowest common denominator. We have a very uniform platform. So we've invested, and in fact, I ended up about three, two and a half years ago setting up my own company um, that all it does is exclusively our tech. Um, which is, is a, I guess, a big decision at that time. It's, it was um, probably no more um, uh, relevant than it is today because technology is really growing at a quick rate. We saw that two and a half years ago, and we've got a team of you know, five, six developers that work with us full time and they iterate with us full time. Um, what it allows us to do is to compete with other technology providers. So we're not at the mercy of aggregators or, or third parties. Um, and we, we have a very direct relationship with our customers. So for me, we're an end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, we, have, we, we, have, we own our entire value chain and we think that's critical for our business going forward. So you're saying that you're, you, you have your own set of, like you have, you have your own delivery, delivery platform. Yeah. And your own drivers and the logistics. Yeah, we, we have everything. So we've got 125 delivery drivers. We, all of our IT, our online ordering, and there's a huge amount on the back end of that we own. So all our CRM, all of our uh, marketing activities. And so we fully integrate all of our, you know, our front end, so our customer experience with our back end. And because we built that and developed that ourselves, it, it, and we're continuing to build it, we've got years of development in queue, but it's actually creating this incredible opportunity to create this platform that works beautifully and seamlessly between the customer and ourselves. So um, what the customer doesn't see is what's happening on the backside, which is actually informing the way that we do business. So we're not using technology, just we use it for marketing, for digital marketing, and all those, 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 those good uses. We use it to facilitate the consumer transaction, but we're also using it to get better at serving the customer and uh, the way that, and the efficiency of our operations. Yeah, but what's the precedent for doing that? I mean, you're managing your own technology, comes with its own challenges in terms of support. You, you could deal with issues of uh, obsolescence, disruptions coming into the market. I mean, if there's stuff already out there, why would you go through the pains of looking at code and def you know, like, Going through the whole, I mean, it's a, it's, I, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a twice failed technologist. Right, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, so, and I'm not so, a tech person. But yeah, I, so I, I mean, I, 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 I think it'll be interesting because I, it's, it's, you, you, you obviously took the, you know, the path less traveled. But what's a precedent for you to say, like, I'm not going to leverage what's out there and I'm going to do this myself? I, I, I think you're, because ultimately you're, 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 you're in the food business, but now you're kind of in the tech business as yeah. well. Yeah, so, so I think, it, what are you? well, I'm in delivery, right? <laughs> so delivery is by definition intertwined with technology and you know, will increasingly be so. And the, and the previous panel um, demonstrated that. For me, it was a fear. If, I couldn't get what I wanted from third parties. Um, I couldn't get the, now there are platforms, everything we do in our business is, uh, is, is cloud-based. So whether it's our HR system, our operating system, our accounting system, if you come into our offices, we don't have any filing cabinets, <laughs> which is the way we like it. Um, but so, so the platform that we built is the glue that holds it all together. So because we own this platform, this, we can actually integrate it with virtually anything we want, and we can use it to run our business better. In terms of the precedent, there was no precedent. I have no precedent that I'm aware of, um, but other than the fact that we could do it, I felt that we could do it. I felt that we needed to do it because it was the only way that I could run the business the way I wanted to. And third party, de dealing with third party software developers is a bigger nightmare than doing it yourself. 
And once you have the right team in place and you get them to understand what you're doing, sorry. No, I've got to agree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's fun, and this is what, what, one of the problems uh, you know, faced with the industry, and I've seen it from the hospitality side, is you, know, you end up doing things yourself, building your data, because there is a lack of integration between different systems. So you have some very good systems across the market, but they don't talk to each other effectively. And when you're a restauranteur or hotelier, you end up, at the end of the day, building your kind of platform to get everything pieced together um, to, to do this. And I can see where it's coming from. The problem is, if you're big enough, you can do it. If you are a single outlet, single restaurant, then you can't. And you have to rely on, on us, on vendors, to be able to work together to provide a platform that will respond to the needs of the consumer. And I'd, I'd agree with that as well. And I think the, the, the biggest issue is I don't want somebody between me and my consumer, right? So, and that's what the people were talking earlier about controlling your data. And um, I control my data. I have, you know, I, we have a, a homogenous database, even if it's coming from phone orders, we, we see all of our data in real time. Um, and we can interact with our customers in real time without somebody in the middle. And in my business, I, I think for restaurants it's a different story, but in my business, that, that is my business. I'm in the business of, uh, you know, there's a lot of psychology around ordering. Whenever somebody orders, there's a high degree of anxiety. And this is, I think everyone in this room would probably understand that. So my job as a delivery company, which is what we are, um, we happen to sell pizza and healthier uh, foods, but my job is to alleviate that, uh, that uh, and mitigate that uh, anxiety uh, from the ordering process. So I'm coming back to this, I'm bringing, the, I'm, I'm intertwining the two, the previous session to this one, <laughs> yeah. is what do you think about the 30% that these guys are charging? Are you operating at a lower percentage in terms of your delivery platform? I, I, mean, what, I am, yeah, I am. You are? Yeah. What do you, what, so, you so, and, I'll, and I'll be honest with you, so I use some of those services, um, and we're gonna be moving away from them. Um, we use them for data collection, um, and we, it was an experiment to see what kind of data we could get um, in addition to our own marketing activities. And we've had success in that, um, and we appreciate their, the, the platform. We appreciate what they do, um, but longer term, it's not our business model. And so can you share with us, like, what, what a, what a, like in terms of, like, what, is it, what does that cost to you? Because so, 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 I want to use that okay, to no, negotiate no, right. with these guys. Yeah, no, actually, I wanted so you to negotiate. Why, like, with, help us. Uh, I, was, help. I was hoping you were going to negotiate a deal with Uber. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uber Eats, but, but what I think is interesting is it, it, there's the, uh, the notion that your driver, all they do is do deliveries is interesting. Um, but that's not the way I run my business. My drivers do everything, right? So our drivers are cross-trained. They work in the kitchens. They do everything that we do. So, so you know... The cost for me is actually not as much as you'd think, um, because I'm not just dividing the number of deliveries by the number of What I would argue, and, and our, the previous panel might say otherwise, is that they're not profitable. Um, you know, so there's a lot of this idea of I'm a tech company, so I don't have to make money. So I, would, you know, I know what it costs to run a driver. I know what it costs per delivery. And I would argue that they're at best marginally profitable, if at all. And so I question the long-term viability of those models. Oh, wow. Interesting. So, so you know. This is a good question because your, your model is so different. Most of us tech uh, rest, restaurateurs, I mean, we, we know how to use a POS system, right? But we don't have like CIOs and CTOs sitting around, right? And most of us are just dumb when it comes to understanding integration and we all that. We can cook anyway. And so we've got so much, so like, like I'm using, I'm using, there's a, there's a company called uh, Chope in Thailand. I use Chope, it's an online uh, reservation management and table management system links up to, you know, you can book through them or you could book through their relationship with TripAdvisor. We've, we've gained tremendous amounts of bookings from them. But then that, that data sits there. Then I've got my data in my POS system. Mm -hmm. And then like, mm -hmm. I don't know when the guy, like so before when you used to come to eat at a restaurant, right? You had to manage that expectation. When the guy came in, he ate. So you worried about that like 50, you know, two hours when he's there and you're managing that expectation, <laughs> so making it. sure he's got a great experience. Now I've got to worry like three months before he's even walked into my restaurant. I don't know who he is. Then I've got to manage his expectations with him. Then I got to worry about three months after. Some guys even like start posting stuff like, you know, six <laughs> months later because like one day they woke up and then really angry and decided to put a bad review. We don't, but we don't know who this guy is. So there's this challenge of we know we need data. We know, we know that we need the data so that we can do better targeted marketing, but these, this data is sitting in, in, in all these different technologies. We can't combine them to understand how that guy is engaging with us before he comes to us, when he's at the restaurant, 
when he leaves and how he tries to you know, engage with social media to talk about us. So, and, and, and on top of that, we don't have the technology guys to tell us how to do it. So you know, how do we solve that problem, Sarah? I'm going to come to you. I mean, what, what do we do? You need to rely on us, to, and as, us as vendors in general, to, to, to work together and not being close and protective of our of own uh, software and technology. At the end of the day, we're living in a world where uh, there is a lot of specialist uh, systems. And an ERP solution is a great if you've got you know, the, the money, if you've got the funds, if you're big enough to use. But like everything, I think you, if, if you take an analogy to the kitchen, uh, if you provide a menu uh, with 500 attempts from 30 different countries, you're not going to do well all of them. You can, specially, you can do one thing very well, two things reasonably well, three things less well. And if you look on software, the same, you have a lot of specialized system. You know, you do something very well, we do another part very well, or I hope, and some other systems will do other things. The problem is, you know, we, we're in a situation whereby, they, you know, sometimes you don't want to work with somebody else because of conflict of interest, uh, sometimes, and we need to open up to be able to work. We've seen that on the hospitality, and there's no standard in, in messaging protocol neither. So you have one system work one way, another way with another technology, and then you're going to spend time and cost and involvement to develop there rather than to have a standardized, I'd say, interface system that anybody can plug with anybody. And you know, this happened into the, the hospitality world with STNG, they developed that, and you know, we need to push that to the F&B as well. The other thing yeah. that's interesting I find is that it, you know, having worked with a lot of developers, developers don't understand your business very well, typically. And you we know, don't understand them. Well, th but what's interesting, because you understand as a consumer what you like, right? And that's probably all you need to know, right? Sure. And then you need to know when they tell you you can't do something because they don't want to do it, that it's actually possible. But, um, but what we do is we, we bring our developers, you know, we, we, they work in our stores, they understand, you know, when, when something goes wrong. So our, our developers today know our business extraordinarily well. And so the, it not only helps them to, uh, it, you know, when we're developing, you know, we're constantly developing, but it, it informs the way they do things. And that's a big difference between having somebody, and it took a while to get them to that place. Um, because they didn't, they, they were developers. They didn't understand our business, but today they do. Yeah, but the challenge is that, like, okay, I'll tell you. Now you're saying, okay, no, the way to go, we got to connect all the different systems. At each component, there's like so much choice, mm -hmm. and then I got to decide, like, hey, are these guys? I want to use this one, but I don't know if he's the best. Is he going to be around next year? Maybe he's not going to be around. Yeah. And then it's, you know, and, and we, there's just a lack of knowledge, you know, because we want the best, right? Like, we know what we want, but we also want the best. We want to make sure we're going to get great support. But, like, it, that's, that's really easy for us to be like, oh, yeah, we'll just connect all these things. But most of us don't have the, the knowledge in, in order to make those decisions. So I'm asking you, like, how, one, how do we get over that challenge? But isn't there somebody right now who's, like, thinking, I'm going to create the SAP, um, the Oracle, where, of, of, of where like, I'm going to literally connect um, from table management, reservation management. I'm going to have like. I, I think that's what we do. Yeah, actually. I'm going to come to you. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, Sarah's been like, you know, she, she wants me to give her the mic. OK, Sarah, tell, tell us um, what, what, what you do, because what you do is um, really interesting. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me here. I'm, I'm very excited to be part of this um, conference. Um, so I think the underlying problem for hospitality and FMBs and outlets and is to un basically be able to provide customized and personalized dining experience. Because we understand that if you have an equation whereby you, know, you have the best chef, ambience, location, if all equation is equal and there's a lot of competition, the one thing that separates um, truly maximizing revenues is being able to take care of your guests at all superior customer experience. But what we have in the actual market is two major problems. One is that venues don't have access to data about their diners. Immediate, relevant, real-time access to data that they can use. And then two, there's tons of systems out there that you kind of have to be a technology whiz to be able to operate. You have a booking system, you have a table management system, you have a POS system, a customer loyalty program for huge groups. Um, there's just so much, a credit card payment platforms, a reservation, delivery apps, all of those. And so this is where ServeMe comes in and to basically solve that. We 
want to solve two major issues. One is how do we enhance operations on the ground for FMB so that the hostesses and the complete staff can continue being able to focus on the guests and not being able to manage all these difficult you know, solutions. And two, to feed them this data about the guests, identify patterns and habits about guests in order to be able to deliver a better personalized dining experience. If I can connect, which I do, to different POS systems, different loyalty programs, if I can get that data and show it off the bat to all of the st staff and hostesses, they can actually deliver an upsell any unique item that they can off the bat. So not only are you able to, we connect a landline and mobile network so that if the guest calls, you can see the complete profile of the guest and say, hello, Sarah, it's nice to see you again. Last time you were with us was two weeks ago. Let me book a table for you. Um, last time you were sitting at table 41 and you ordered this item. And so the waiter can also upsell all these items. So I definitely believe that there's a lot of technologies out there and the objective of what we're trying to do is integrate. And this is why we were having a conversation whether we can integrate with further PLS systems because we can really enhance the top line for the restauranters so that they can focus on delivering this superior customer experience. I think um, we really had a conversation yep. as well about data and I think um, looking at previous panels and discussions it was about integration of data and you're saying on one side it's difficult to connect these data points. On the other hand, I think in today's society always finding a system that does it all becomes rarer and rarer, right? There is systems out there that they can do a lot of great things, but on the other hand, the, the compatibility and the integration of various data points is incredibly crucial. Um, we come from a very different background. I mean, we, we're actually looking at the back of the house scenario, so we're talking a lot about this conference in the last few days about, you know, the end user experience. Um, what, what is the customer doing? How are they making their buying choices? How do we influence that? How do we create a better experience? But I think we, we also need to look at the better experience in a similar fashion for the actual operator themselves. You know? So talking about data connectivity is how is the operation performing? You know, if we're looking at, we're talking of fresh food, um, um, quality of service, freshness and so forth, does the operator know where the food comes from, the cold chain management, the food safety um, um, standards, the compliance? Um, the ambient temperatures in the operation, the energy efficiency, all these back of the house scenarios that actually is bottom line for the operator is also equally crucial, right? So once you start connecting these data points in a, in a, in a platform that allows you to make from the data better calculated decision to increase your revenue, your, your ROI or your, your efficiency in your, in, your, um, in your operations, that's crucial. And that's where we come in as an example. So I think the, the connectivity points of data is crucial today. I think you, you can't rely only on yourself. I mean, I mean, you know, that's so interesting. We spent the entire conference just looking at the front end, right? We're like yeah. talking yeah. about, um, you know, engagement and consumers, social right. media. We're talking about how we're delivering. We're talking about restaurant experience and connecting it with customers' emotions. Mm -hmm. But we failed to forget, and that's a really, really good point, that ultimately, in order for the restaurants to work, it's not, it's not outside in, right? It's inside out. And there are critical systems and processes uh, uh, within the back office um, that make these, make these restaurants work. And, 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 and that being said, we're also at a time in which we're dealing with global epidemics. We're dealing with you know, breakouts that could occur. I mean, health and safety is becoming really, really interest, uh, important. And at the end, also, we have to remember that we're putting the food that we, 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 we you know, the, you know we're, that whole ecosystem, yeah. where the food is coming from, how is it stored, um, you know, and, and all the compliance issues related to that. I mean, that's critical to what we do. We haven't spent any time talking about that. Can you talk to us a little bit about innovation on the back end and what you guys have done and where you, you, you believe restaurants could do better in terms of innovation on, and, 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 and adapting to some of these things? Sure. Um, I, th I think um, a lot of the discussions in, in the last two days was about um, you know, how real time the data has become. Right? So as a consumer, you, you, you know that restaurant um, is doing well. It's in real time. If there's a bad experience, it will pop up to the top. Um, you know exactly on proximity marketing where there is a special and it might entice you to go there. At the same time, back of the house data, it needs to be real time. You know? yeah. So uh, earlier, just in the, in, the, in the previous panels, it was about you know, Instagram images of a pizza or a plate, but what's the story behind it, right? So we're talking fresh, organic, local. Um, 
what is, what is the, the actual food safety data compliance that you have in real time? So think about your, your food waste management from a sustainability perspective. You know, the, we, we have hospitality partners, of course, here um, that we also work with very closely where it's talking about how do we manage food waste, you know, to be more sustainable? How do we manage food safety compliance to ensure the customer experience is maintained through and through? And this is where we actually have connected solutions. So we're talking this IoT, Internet of Things environment, where we take traditional business cases and we, 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 we have sensoring, we have ambient sensoring, we, we give real-time data insights on how your operation is performing on, on multiple levels. And, and you can then benchmark that data against industry standards or how, how's your neighborhood doing in your equally um, large operations or small operations on how do you compare. You know? so, so I think it's about real-time data from the actual solutions that you use, food safety, food traceability, um, you know, but also your machine data in terms of your kitchen environments, um, how is your dishwasher performing in terms of energy usage and water saving and so forth. So, so a lot of these aspects are being connected um, and give you real-time insights to, to make sure you make um, calculated decisions to, to, to increase your ROI and, and become a better operator. Sarah, back to you. Um, you want to give us an example of, of you know, a, a, a case study in which you went in yeah. And uh, you know maybe because I, what you what you what you're offering sounds really interesting. It could be a potential solution yeah. um, for a lot of us in the market. So I want to kind of go back to you a little bit. Give us a little like a, a snapshot of a, a customer that came to you and, and how you were able to solve some of their challenges and what have been the what have what have been the wins from that. Right. So because we integrate with our system with existing systems such as the POS system, um, I'm able to pull real time data about their spending. And I'm able to allow the staff to understand how much each person is contributing into the venue on a group level. Not only that, but I give the ability for the staff to use that as a tool in order to upsell uh, during the person's uh, personalized dining experience. So a common thing uh, or a customer journey at one of our restaurants would be the waiter would immediately have a waiter ticket and be able to go to the person who's dining and say, oh, Sarah, it's nice to see you again. Um, I know you're allergic to seafood. That's been noted to the chef. And I know last time you ordered this bottle of wine, but we're no longer um, offering this, but I can, we have a new supplier coming in, which I'd like you to try. Continuously upselling with new customers not only drives their personalized dining experience, but allows uh, the restaurant to be on, on spot and knowing who their diners exactly are. Not only that, but since we have a real-time connection, for example, with the POS as well, I can have the staff immediately know to better wa manage walk-ins. So if a place is completely full, uh, the hostess can say, uh, can look at the t whatever tools that she has and say, okay, this, this person's having dessert, this person's ha is closing their check and can better manage walk-ins. Because at the end of the day, you and I had a very big discussion about yield management and how the, the, the holy grail is how can you maximize revenue per seat per hour? How can you make sure continuously that you're capturing data about your guests, being able to see exactly what's going on in your restaurant or at the group level in order to continuously capture that? So this is where we're able to come in, help, and not only that, we measurably drive increased average guest spend um, and footfall. And so this is why we're here. We want to manage existing systems. We want restaurateurs to continue doing what they do so best and to continuously provide superior dining experience while we're being used at a back end and being able to optimize everything in the, in the back end. Fantastic. Um, Ian, coming back to you. Would you spin off your technology and, and, and be like, let, let's get in, like, you know, we've got this thing, it works for us, let's spin it off and let's start a technology company because we've got a, a reliable technology that, that's better than what's out there. I'm assuming you have a great technology. I actually want a piece of it. Um, <laughs> but would you actually think of doing that? Like, so, I mean, we're, I, the way I look at it, we're still building the theme park, right? So we're building all the rides now um, and, and we've, we're, sort of picking up speed as well. But we are building with a view to um, having a broader platform. So I'm not developing the back of, you know, I'm not developing the, and we're continuing to, we're, we're investing in a great deal of money. But it's, so the answer is it's, an, it's on the table and it's an opportunity. So we, we could either go into, um, we're, we're learning so much now um, and, you know, it's, and we're iterating at such a quick pace now and our developers are strong and we, so, we're really at a point where we've really hit our stride. Um, we, you know, the problem is every time I take one step, I see ten steps further, and we want to do more. But 
we're doing something that is going to help grow our business as we grow um, internationally. So we're looking at expanding in the UK now. So the, all this IT helps us do that in a, in a big way um, and gives us a great deal of control. Um, but the, uh, the stuff that we're developing, we think, is pretty interesting. And we think it's, in some cases, uh, doesn't exist in other parts, in, anywhere else in the world. Um, so that might be an arrogant statement. But, but we think, because it's, it's a real-time experiment, it's a real-time uh, you know, Petri dish, uh, you know, Freedom Pizza, for the IT, it's very possible that we could use that um, data to help others. Um, if I'm a company, I want to roll out a digital marketing strategy, do you think it's something, just a quick one, do you think it's something that we should um, do in-house or should we find a third party to do it? Just a quick quick answer. Um, for me, I would do it in-house as long as you can aggregate the data. Third party, for sure. Depend of your size. Again, you know, there's a cost to everything. So if you can be enough to, so if you're small, outsource. If you're big enough, do it in-house. Uh, but make sure people doing it know what they're doing. Sorry? I'm big on integration. That's how we work. Keep so. it in-house? Um, integrate with third party. It integrate makes sense. With third party? Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions? Anybody have any questions out there for the panelists here? Any questions? There you go. Um, in the hotel industry, we've seen companies like Triptease uh, come into the sector in the last uh, three years, and they now have 12,000 hotels on their books, and they're disrupting the OTAs with approximately 22 to 25 percent conversion um, from OTAs now back to direct. Uh, for those members that are participating, what is it in your space that you see that might disrupt you or disrupt the sector? I'd say somebody who comes up with an ERP, like SAP, that integrates everything <laughs> in one solution. Honestly, I'd love to have that. Because like, it's, it's, it's a headache for me to kind of go navigate through all these things that are out there. Well, so, I feel like I would love that. Yeah, so uh, if, if I can answer, just uh, the disruption I say is, is what we're doing. Not in the sense of just what SurveMe is doing, but the ability to integrate the ability to have any, to give the choice of a restaurant to continue using whatever system that they can while they make sure that the data is yours. You know, just before we we're talking, you're talking about with the panelists about um, whether the data is theirs or not. With us, for example, we make sure because of the integration that the data stays there versus other delivery apps or whatever, they basically hone in on the data and then they use that again in order to uh, better maximize on their own guests and outreach. For us, it's the, the ability of continuously to integrate and that would be the disruption of our technologies. This is how I see it going forward. I also think that, um, I think the disruption is happening. We saw it in the last panel. Um, there's, I think technology is a great disruptor, and I think um, if you sort of hone down on it, it's, it's really this fight for the, for the, you know, it's the fight to get to the consumer. So anything that can wedge themselves between your business and the consumer is a, is a threat to the business. Um, and I think, um, you know, if you look at Amazon, there's now businesses being set up in the U.S. that are designed to uh, basically compete with Amazon, if that's possible, but by giving merchants the opportunity to have a direct relationship with the customer through their platform. So, so they're, they're saying, okay, yeah, Amazon's big and they're huge and they're wonderful and they're incredible, but, you know, but ultimately they're stepping between you and your, your consumer. So anyone who can do that um, is a threat to the business, and, um, and you have to stay ahead. Tech, you know, I think the, the key is you have to keep moving in technology because the next disruptor is out there. Um, it just, but the key is how prepared are you and how, how, how close are you to where that disruptor is that you can counteract that and keep moving forward. I think it's about, sorry, go ahead. Karen, Karen. I think really it's about, um, I agree, it's about the user experience at the end of the day, you know, and, and uh, we're, all, we're all in that disruptive field at the moment. You know, there's a lot happening. But um, why you got to have a, you know, we talked yesterday about um, quick trends and, and secular trends, but something that's going to remain, keep driving that forward. Try, don't be afraid to try things, and I think don't be afraid to fail. Um, fail fast, fail cheap, you know, and, uh, and make sure that the user experience that, you, that you're pushing forward is, is, is second to none and do it well. Um, and that's never going to stop. You're not going to produce, um, we're talking technology now, you're not going to 
have it on your on your on your workbench and 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 deliver the perfect platform. You know, it doesn't exist. You, the next thing is around the corner, so you need to keep your head above the water and and, and focus on the on the user experience of the customer, what they're looking for. Last but comment. Yeah, no, the last thing is uh, it's not so much disruption, but always be careful and never that that you remain in control and proprietary of your data. You know, your data is what you own, is your customers. And what, one of the dangers that happened with the OTAs is they became the owner of the data to the point that when booking comes, you don't even get the email address of the customer anymore. So just be very careful that, you know, this is your data, it's your customer, not the third party. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your panelists. Thank you.